Welcome ladies and gents to my review of the PC version of Call of Duty World War 2 Beta. Before we get into this review, I just want to state that I know this is a beta and it's not a finished product, and it's viable to small and large changes upon its full release. I will be giving my review based upon the content within the beta that I've played this far. This is a strange kind of game in today's market, as it is both the most hated and yet the most loved gaming franchise there is due to a passionate audience for this game. It started so strong, but over the years, the repetitiveness and the future versions of the game have muddied the waters, but Activision have rerouted the game back to its roots in order to try and save the franchise, refloat and reset our passion for the product and ensure that we pre-order, buy and get the DLC content for it. What makes me most happy about this new Call of Duty outing is not what they've added but what they have removed, the jetpacks, the laser robots and the other high tech babble that turned us off. As the original boots on the ground at the World War 2 setting is where it began and our love for this game and the sigh of relief that the future tech has gone is a good one. The maps appear to be smaller and less vertical. There are small ledges to climb here and there, but that's it, and I'd rather it be like that. Not more silly rules to run along and high-tech ledged access to gain via jetpacks. Gameplay. As boots on the ground soldier, you will run around like a headless chicken, guns blazing and lobbing grenades across the map. The gameplay is fast, frantic, and you'll need quick reactions to keep up. This is the same as it always has been, but that's why most people love the gameplay. Small respawn timers with lots of gunplay. You may not have noticed, but it seems that we no longer have the auto-aim feature within the game this time around. In previous incarnations, you may have noticed that as you aim at the target, the reticle would follow for a split second. Now you have to manually hold your sights, inciting a bit more skill that's needed, which I feel is the correct decision for this FPS game that relies on a base player skill. Graphics. This is a very good looking game. For me playing in 1440p with max settings, the gritty setting of World War II pops and makes me feel immersed within the action. The guns look great, and the animations for different actions, grenade throwing, recoil and bullet ejection look on point with what you would expect from the time period. Sound. The sound of the guns, soldiers, explosions sound excellent. You can hear the bullet shots all around you with ease, and the truly horrifying thuds of grenades sound spectacular. Replay value. The replay value of this version of Call of Duty is great because of one factor, the war mode. It creates the unique moments in each map that will keep each player wanting to come back for more as they try to conquer the map and capture different objectives. Being able to both defend and attack each time you play with different objectives gets you using different classes and tactics to defend or attack certain objectives, which creates different gameplay elements in every single match that you play. The weapons. The weapons feel like they have real weight and each bring their strength and weaknesses to several hundred firefights that you will enter in each match. The last few incarnations of this game with their so-called advanced guns made them feel like toys, making me feel like I was playing laser tag and didn't give me the pride and success you earn from using the old style gritty World War 2 guns. Being a single soldier with a gritty beat up gun using broken tanks on fire for cover and half exploded houses for firefights is what Call of Duty franchise was built upon and I'm so glad that it's all back. War Mode This is a multi-stage invasion scenario where teams must complete a list of objectives and move across the map. The game mode has some unique moments not seen before in a Call of Duty game, which give it a fresh feeling. In this beta, we only had one map to try this game mode on, but that's fine for me and serves all the means in which to add it to this review. In this game mode, it involves a tank moving through the town, with one team attacking and one defending. You must clear buildings and construct or destroy objectives to move forward, giving me a great sense of object objective to complete within this game mode and something to push my team on. In Call of Duty World War II, the multiplayer class systems are divided up into divisions. Five base classes, which you can then take and redefine in order to better suit your playstyle. This has previously been called Create a Class, Pick 10 and Rigs in previous Call of Duty games. But in Call of Duty World War II, you'll have to choose between five classes and then select from an amount of skills. Problems. Kill streaks are way, way too hard to achieve. It takes eight kills to get a bomb strike in this uh, beta so far. Entire matches with people camping to achieve these kill streaks, which is not the intended use. And also with maps, they have so many entrances to each building and area, which makes it hard to push or advance the enemy and also defend objectives. This has been my review for the Call of Duty World War II open beta on the PC. I ask that you don't take my word or any other reviewer's word for this game. This is merely my opinion and may differ a lot to the next person. Make up your own mind with the points that I've made in this video whether they detract or attract you to this game and make you want to purchase it. Maybe you need to investigate this game more before parting with your money. Thanks for watching and be sure to comment what you think about this franchise reboot. Cheers!